Yeah, come in. Kids, listen. I just finished playing this game. I gotta tell you all about it. Ah, Jesus Ugh, Christ. Again? Well kids, it seems like the time is ripe for shooters with comic-inspired graphics. I played the Fallen Aces demo from New Blood recently and I enjoyed myself and here comes another graphic novel shooter, this one called Forgive Me Father. Why do their titles both start with the letter F? Is this just a coincidence? Is there something I don't- Forgive Me Father just released to early access the same day that Doom Eternal dropped update 6.66, so I imagine nobody's playing this right now, which is a great excuse for me to make a video saying that you kids kids really, really need to play this game. Developed by Polish studio Bite Barrel and published by 1C Entertainment, Forgive Me Father follows an unnamed priest in the late 1920s who's come to the small town of Pestisville, Massachusetts to investigate some strange goings-on involving some interesting relics, only to find the town is overrun with a disease that causes the dead to walk amongst the living. Grabbing a gun and heading for the streets, the good father discovers a variety of Lovecraftian terrors running amok, and from what we get in the early access package, it looks like it's only the tip of the iceberg. What was that? It wasn't a fox, was it? I don't know. Is it a fox? Shine something. Ooh! The content provided so far is divided between two episodes, or worlds as they're called in this game. World 1, which is more downtown urban environment, and World 2, which visits the swamps and graveyard just outside of Pestisville. Forgive Me Father does a lot of heavy lifting right from the jump, presenting story bits and floating text so you know to examine them for more insight into what's going on. What's great about this is that if you die and have to run through a section of the game again, you're not forced to get bogged down by exposition just to get back to where you were, or from the beginning you can skip the story altogether and focus more on the gorgeous graphics and ghost-busting gameplay. For what it's worth, the story itself is fairly vague, filling in gaps of information that help the father come to understand how this all started and what's going on, while still leaving plenty to the imagination. What I was able to discern was that the mayor of the town seems to be a corrupt individual in league with some local mafia running illegal alcohol throughout the town. He also might have even bumped off a younger, idealistic candidate who's been campaigning against him. While I couldn't quite connect the dots between the mayor and and what appears to be a local cult that got something shipped into town on the sly, there's still plenty of story and world building to come in future updates for the game. And boy fucking howdy, is there some world building going on here. While the story text is there to give us a nudge towards understanding how things got to how they are here in Pestisville, the game does more visually through slowly unveiling the terrors that lurk beneath the town's facade. And as far as the visuals go, holy fucking shit, look at how beautiful this game is. Gritty, textured, detailed, looking like a lurid graphic novel you'd find in the back of a dime store so that children wouldn't get to it easily. Forgive Me Father has some of the best visual aesthetics I have seen in a long time. So far, this is competing with Vomitorium for the most visually striking game of the year. Now, you kids might be old enough to know a little horror series called Tales from the Crypt. Well, what you might not be old enough to know is that the show was based on a comic book of the same name from the 40s and 50s, published by EC Comics, who also published such titles as The Vault of horror and weird science. They specialized in weird, twisted, horrific tales with shock twist endings, but they were forced to shut down in the late 50s due to censorship and the comics code basically neutering any horror content in the funny books. I bring that up because Forgive Me Father absolutely nails the grimy, hard, black-lined artwork from those lurid tales of terror. I am honestly stunned. The hand-drawn look of the sprites and textures are big enough to see clearly, but never seem too muddy when viewed from afar. I particularly enjoyed the line work on the priest's hand whenever he held up his lantern. It's just, ugh, the comic art. Loading screens also show off some of the enemy designs, which gives us a better feel for the style, which lands somewhere between hurried indie artist finally getting his crack at drawing a book for the first time and well-practiced college doodles. Don't take that the wrong way. This is expertly crafted shit and looks fan-fucking-tastic both in-game and on its own. Bite Barrel knew exactly what they were looking to achieve, and they full-on fucking nailed it. Eerie. Unsettling otherworldly realism that slowly descends further and further into chaotic madness with harsh bloom effect lighting and foggy aesthetics. Adding to the pulp comic feel are the text effects that pop up, hovering over ammo and health and armor pickups, as well as letting you know when you got a headshot or destroyed a tank of liquid. It's subtle shit, 
but it's immersive shit. I've never really gotten into games that tried to emulate the look or feel of a comic book because, well, as a comic book fan, they've generally been trying too hard in the past. Forgive Me Father feels less like a game trying to look like a comic book and more like a comic book that happens to be a first-person shooter. There's a slight film grain laid over the screen and a thick black border around the HUD, which both adds to the newspaper print vibes and also gives the game a slight VHS horror look at the same time. Sticking that kind of landing is a rare feat. Imagine trying to make a comic book and a VHS horror at the same time. It's ludicrous, but it works, and I love every single visual this game has to offer. It's all about the little touches too, like the way the tentacles squirm on the upgraded double barrel, or the way the creatures take damage and actually show visual changes depending on where you hit them. Some of the zombies carry decapitated heads with them, and you can actually shoot them out of their hands. It's really neat. Speaking of neat, the creature designs are super fucking neat. Holy shit, I knew going in that we were in for some Cthulhu-based bullshit, but Forgive Me Father zooms around the tropes and steers directly into the creative zone. Wretches, those zombies I've mentioned like six times already, they're fairly basic stuff, but they look great with a deft variety of flavors that they come in. I liked the fat fish, basically mafiosos who are barely stitched together that, unless you explode them, they will fall apart and their top halves will come crawling at you to get in another couple of attacks. My personal favorite of the basic enemy types are the liquidators, not because I like fighting them, <laughs> fuck no. They move fast and their fireballs hurt, but they are so fucking distinct. They all have some kind of weird radio that they speak through, which distorts their voices in a super creepy way, and they have tubes or tentacles hanging off of them along with a backpack filled with some kind of acid that will disintegrate half of their body if you manage to cap it. Since they're now partially melted and have no weapon, they'll charge at you while radiating some kind of damaging effect around them. Liquidators also come in multiple forms, from police officers to soldiers to hospital workers. They're the design is simple and effective, and the fact that there are so many different kinds of them make them feel a little more insidious, like they could be anybody. One enemy that I did not like were the Kamikadazi, Kamikot, Kamikot, Come on. Yeah, those guys. The barrels. Mimic barrels. You know, an exploding red barrel that's a mimic that will come to life and charge you if you get too close. What? There are red barrels everywhere, so you know, one wrong turn and one or two of them will come to life and run screaming at you, and you'll shoot at them blindly and they'll explode, and so will you, and I hate them. I hate them so fast fucking much. Later on in the game, there are even more creepy bad guys, from the ghouls who trudge forward carrying heavy objects to bludgeon you with, to the fishers who lob exploding fish at you, to the cultists and their awful magic blasts. Yellow cultists summon slow-moving homing fireballs, while forest cultists teleport around and shoot fast red fireballs. As the game progresses through various areas, new enemies pop up left and right, specific to the environment. Too many to go through for one review video, but despite there being a surprisingly large variety of different enemies, every single one felt unique, distinct, and I was given enough time to learn how to work around them. Major kudos to both enemy design and usage. Gameplay is both strikingly straightforward and also surprisingly deeper than I expected. The bulk of the game consists of navigating through Pestisville, guns a-blazing as the priest, utilizing some basic first-person shooter weaponry to see the day through. Now you got a pistol, a double-barrel shotgun, a Tommy gun, a uh, burst fire machine gun, and by the end of the early access, a fucking harpoon gun. It'll one-shot most everything, and it'll shoot through enemies as well. All of the weapons feel solid, particularly the shotgun, and while at first I thought having two machine guns was kind of odd, the difference in sound and execution makes perfect sense. Ugh, god, there's nothing like the beefy sound of the Tommy gun when you're going to town on the squid monsters. The priest also gains access to a variety of objects labeled skills. You get a lantern for seeing in the dark, a crucifix for regaining health through faith, a mop for splashing holy water on creatures to freeze them, I swear to god, that is actually how that works. A bible that grants you temporary immortality, and a medallion that also temporarily grants infinite ammo. With the exception of the lantern that never runs out, you charge your skills through the madness meter. Now, the good father might be a man of the cloth, but he's seeing some serious shit right now, and that would do a number on anyone. Fuck you, go to me father, like it doesn't turn you on just to say it. As your madness meter rises, it'll charge your skills, and the HUD will show you how many charges of the skill you've received. Another thing the madness meter does is up your damage output and lower your damage intake. So the higher your madness, the more of a wrecking ball you become. 
There's jugs of alcohol lying about that increase your madness meter a touch, so throwing back the hooch can help the priest charge skills quicker. As you go through the game, the priest will gain experience points as he downs the baddies, and leveling up means gaining points to put into upgrading weapons and skills. The skill tree itself has some really cool branches you take along it. You want to upgrade your shotgun by injecting some cosmic entity into it so it now shoots bouncing pellets? Go for it. You want to upgrade your machine gun to lob grenades instead of bullets? Have fun with it. Meanwhile, there are also other, more traditional upgrades, such as making your your crucifix regain more health each time you use it, or upgrading your lantern to cast more light around you. There's no health or armor upgrades from what I can tell so far, but there are sections of the skill tree that are blocked off for future updates, so we'll see how it goes. I gotta admit here, kids, normally I know pretty much what skills I want to upgrade off the bat so that I can tank around a bit or have higher damage output, but the weapon variety and usage makes it so that it can be really tough to settle on what you might want to specialize or make deadlier at first. Forgive Me Father does not make the going easy easy on you, not in the slightest. You'll have to traverse some pretty long stretches, usually capped off by an arena fight or an ambush before you come across another save point. Save points come in the form of Cthulhu statues, guarded by a happy drunk sailor who I believe is named Old Murphy. Look at this man, he is drunk and he is alive still, he is a fucking champion. Enemy placement is designed to be both challenging and unsettling. More than a few sections of the game are darker than shit, so you'll need to hold up your lantern to see where you're going, but you can't can't hold your lantern and your gun out at the same time, so it's a game of cautious movement, followed by dropping your light once something pops up and then shooting into the dark, praying that your aim is good. Of course, you'll know you're aiming right because each enemy has a health bar that displays at the top of the screen when you point at them, which is especially handy when you're trying to figure out which guns to use on what. You won't spend too much time looking at the various health bars often though, as there are many, many, many times when things will literally just fucking lunge at you and you'll only have a split second to react and fire and scream. Other times you'll get swarmed by dozens of wretches as fat fish or liquidators hang out in the background shooting dead magic at you. Challenging is definitely the the word of the day here, downright brutal at times. Forgive me, Father will let you know some shit is about to go down by dumping a bunch of ammo and health and armor in front of you right before a big action sequence. The nice thing about Old Murphy's save points, though, is that usually he's sitting there before said big encounter, or at least close enough by that you can save with him before and after the event. Tackling these ambushes will take some fast-paced critical thinking, as relying solely on guns blazing can and will get you killed fast. Always remember to use your skills, kids. Each world also ends with a boss fight you'll need to wade through, both of which have their ups and downs. The World 1 boss is fine, nothing to write home about, nothing too difficult, but whoo shit, the World 2 boss is fucking nasty. A three-stage adrenaline-fueled endurance test against what I think is an Elder Cthulhu priest, guarded by cultists, all while strafing through the arena and destroying altars to lower the boss's shield. Ugh. Whew, kids, kids, I was fraught for a minute over this one. It's not as hard as the boss in Viscerafest, but it demanded my attention and critical thinking skills. Boomer shooter fans who appreciate a challenge are really going to dig this fight. It's really fucking well designed and will put you through your paces. Sound design is really well done. Each of the creatures have very distinct sounds that will let you know when something specific is around the corner. Again, those liquidators. I did love their little distorted radio voices, as well as the squishy sound sound effects from bullet impact and bodies collapsing. Upgrading the guns also upgrades their sounds. The Tommy gun in particular is a great example of how upgrading the fire rate and the damage output transform its gunfire into a truly beefy effect that sets it apart, and it uses the audio to cue you into the upgrade. Music is decent here too, nothing spectacular, some good synth work in more ambient areas, and some Hull Schultz style heavy guitars and drums during high energy firefights. Nothing really stood out to me track wise, but it did a good job at the immersion, which is all the music in a game like this really needs to do.
so far in the immediate early access release, there isn't very much for me to criticize. As far as the amount of content is provided so far is concerned, players are getting a lot of bang for their buck. I played for about three and a half hours through worlds one and two on hard difficulty, which is one step below the highest difficulty, and I didn't find all the secrets included there. There's plenty to see and do, and there's a level select too, just in case you want to try your hand at diving back into a specific section. One thing that nearly threw me out of the game at first, though, were the controls. I had to do a lot of fiddling to get the mouse control just right, and even still, in doing so, I didn't really feel like I was as precise as I wanted. This was exacerbated by the fact that the game is set to auto-run, and there's no option to walk. God, like, th those of you kids who have been following the channel know this. Dad hates that shit. I want to be able to run when I want to run, not always constantly running at high speed just because that's how the game is. The priest's run cycle is really fast and twitchy too. I had a lot of times where I felt like I was delicately hitting the WASD just to move over slightly because every movement felt like I was leaping everywhere. And by the end, I managed to get into the controls, but the auto run thing is definitely something that I hope that Bite Barrel will adjust down the road. I would love to be able to have the option to hit shift to run while walking at a slower pace while exploring some of the environments. I also had a couple of times when I tried using the holy water mop to stun creatures and it felt a little finicky about whether or not it wanted to work. I wasn't sure if it was me like I wasn't aiming well enough, but it definitely felt like the mop just wasn't hitting even when it should. At only 15 bucks, Forgive Me Father is a steal for the current amount of content and the promise of more to come. Despite my issues with the control and the lack of a walking speed, I had a lot of fun with this game and I was fully absorbed throughout my playtime. Bite Barrel really delivers on the promise of retro shooter goodness and there's honestly just something really cool about a priest packing a shotgun blowing minions of cosmic terror straight to hell. I love you too. Add this one to the list of early access games that I'm going to be eagerly anticipating updates for, and I'm going to give Forgive Me Father an 8.5 out of 10 so far. I really can't wait to see where Bite Barrel takes us as the game develops. Kids, it's not every day we get a first person shooter with Cthulhu themes and settings that is fast paced and blood soaked like this. So if anything you're seeing here makes you want to go pick this up, then by God, go and get this game. What a delightful surprise to dive into. It's going to be hard to be patient while waiting for Bite Barrel to deliver more content, but there's definitely Definitely enough here to satisfy for a minute. In the meantime, make sure you sit up, get some water, and stretch a little bit before you hop back into the zombie shooting, kids. You'll thank me later. We'll see you next time. Question my faith. And? I've never felt closer to God.